let's make a plant-based Chicago style pizza. Welcome back to the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show where we make plant-based cooking easy. I'm Jill and today, boy, do I have a treat for you. We are gonna make a Chicago style deep dish pizza because I am a pizza-holic. I absolutely love pizza and Chicago style is one of my all-time favorites. It's all those, that deep crust, all those toppings just melded together, so delicious. We're putting that out today, even though today was supposed to be our potato, sweet potato gnocchi recipe, uh, but this turned out so amazing that we were so excited to get it out, so we decided to do that one this week instead. Uh, before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to a little girl named Fleur, uh, who's been working her way through our recipes and making them. So, hi Fleur, I hope you're going to enjoy this recipe as much as we do. Alright, so the first thing we're going to start with is our sauce. So I've got a small onion here, just diced up pretty fine that we're going to get in our pan. We're just going to saute it a bit just to get some of that uh, rawness cooked out of it. You don't need to add any oil to your pan. There's actually natural oils in the onions that will keep it from sticking. But if it starts sticking before they get fully cooked, you can always just use a little bit of water or vegetable broth just to keep it from sticking to your pan. So we're going to let these cook just a couple more minutes until, or, and then we'll add our other ingredients. Okay, so now our onions are done. We're going to add three minced cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of oregano, teaspoon of basil, and a half teaspoon of thyme. We're just going to stir that around a little bit just to get those, the heat from the pan to get the garlic cooking a little bit here. And then we're gonna add our crushed tomatoes. So this is one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Now we're just gonna have this cooking on about medium high. And we're just really, essentially, we're just cooking this down so that the sauce is a little bit thicker and giving it time to get those in herbs all incorporated into the sauce. Because this style of pizza, you don't want a wet type of sauce because that's going to make the bottom of your crust soggy. So we're going to try to cook a lot of that moisture out while we're getting our other things going. While we're waiting for that, I'd like to share some background on our show. The Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show is crowdfunded which means these free weekly recipe videos, along with our entire catalog of free printable recipes on our website, plantbasedcookingshow.com, and our Plant-Based Cooking Made Easy cookbook series are all made possible in part by the generous patronage of our supporting membership community. So if you love our recipes, I invite you to join us on our mission to make plant-based cooking easy and follow the link in the description to become a supporting member today. There's no denying the plant-based diet is a nutrient powerhouse, but did you know there are a handful of hard-to-get nutrients even well-crafted diets are often lacking? The latest research suggests that complementing your diet with a few specific vitamins, minerals, and omega-3s will help boost your energy and keep you thriving for the long term. That's why my daily health routine includes Complement Essential. Complement Essential contains the eight critical nutrients lacking from most plant-based diets in dosages optimized specifically for us. As a special discount for our viewers, just use code PLANTBASEDEASY at checkout to save 15% off of your order. Okay, so now that your sauce is cooking onto the crust, and this crust is amazing. I don't know if you've ever had Uno's Pizza. I believe it's something, you know, like a New York type of company that makes these Chicago style pizzas, but theirs is, it's like a pastry crust. And this is the flavor that I was going for. So we've got two cups of almond meal or almond flour one and a half cups of mashed sweet potato, and this is a white sweet potato, but you can also use an orange one, that will work just fine. A half a cup of flax meal, a half a cup of tapioca starch, and two teaspoons of baking powder. Now I'm gonna use my pastry cutter just because it's easier to incorporate. You could use a fork or just spoon it, you know, stir it around with a spoon. I just like to get it incorporated with this pastry knife. It's really very, very handy. So really, you're just trying to get it all mixed together until it comes into a nice big, you know, a ball that's all of the stuff is sticking to itself. Oh, 
Okay, now that I have it basically all stuck together, I'm just gonna press it into a ball just with my hands. And I already have my oven preheated to 375 so that when we're done here, we can just pop it right in the oven. Okay, so there we have our ball. It's very, very sticky, very soft type of dough. It's not like a pizza dough at all. It's more like a very soft pizza crust. So the next step, you're gonna need a couple pieces of parchment paper, a rolling pin, and then I'm gonna do it in a nine inch springform pan because I love popping that springform off and looking at the pizza just in its free form state. But you could make this in a cast iron skillet or a pie plate, plate would work just as well. You might just have to oil the plate a little bit so that your crust doesn't stick. But we're gonna use parchment. So I'm just gonna mash it down a little bit flat with my hands. First, trying to keep it as round as possible. And this crust is gonna go all the way to the edge of these, this parchment paper. All right. So now you're just gonna, just like a pie crust, you're gonna roll out your pastry crust all the way out to the edges of your paper. Or if you have your, uh, your spring form or your pan, you can kind of look at the size by putting it on there and make sure that you have at least a good inch and a half, maybe two inches past the edge of the, the pan that you're gonna use because that's gonna come up around and form the sides. Okay, there we go. That's pretty, pretty good. And because it's not like a pie crust, you're not gonna be able to roll it onto your pin. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna keep it on this piece of parchment here, but getting into the, into the pan is a little bit tricky because we'll have to take some of the folds down around the edges. But, you know, since it is a very soft dough, it breaks very easily. So we're gonna move our pan over here. You're just gonna kinda of let it sink down into your pan and guide it a little bit, trying to keep it so it's centered. So you have an even amount of crust around the edges, the height of that crust. And this too, if you, you know, if your crust breaks, cracks and breaks, it smushes back together super well and it won't leak, none of that stuff. So what I'm doing with the edges, because it's, you know, I didn't form the paper to the pan, for the parts that have the little fold in it where the crust has gone into the fold, you just kind of nudge that out a little bit and then press your, pie cr or your crust back into that edge without the parchment paper in there. Because if you don't do that, then when you try to take that spring form off when it's done baking, you're gonna have to try to get that parchment paper out of those cre crevices and it could break your crust. So this just takes a little patience and a little creativity. So take your time and just work with it until you think it's a nice and pretty shape. All right, there we go. So now that it is ready to go, we're gonna pop it into the oven for 10 minutes just to kind of seal the surface so that when you do put those toppings in, it is less likely to make that crust soggy. So now that our crust is in the oven, we're gonna get onto the cheese sauce. So I've got a cup of cashews. two tablespoons of tapioca starch. And that is gonna allow it to have a little bit of a, a, you know, mozzarella has that kind of stringy, slippery consistency. So it's gonna give it that feeling. One teaspoon of onion powder, two teaspoons of tamari, this is a low sodium tamari, 
and two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and one cup of water. And this uh, recipe also, usually to get the tapioca to firm up like that and get that consistency, people usually cook it first, but because it's gonna be in the oven for a pretty decent amount of time, that's gonna happen while it's in the oven. So all you're gonna do is just blend this until it's really silky and creamy. Okay, there we go. And if you see, it does look a little bit runny right now, but as it sits, those cashews are gonna bulk up and soak up that water and it's gonna get thicker the longer it sits here. So we're just waiting on our crust and our sauce, and then we can assemble this guy. All right, time to assemble. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna put about, about half of the cheese, maybe a little less half of the cheese in the bottom layer. Just like that. About that, a little more. All right, we're gonna kind of level it just a little bit. And then this is completely up to you what toppings you use. You don't wanna put too, too many because it really, you know, it's in the oven for a while, but it does struggle really. There's a lot of ingredients, so it's it tends to be a little on the wet side. So you don't wanna overdo it too much. So I'm gonna use some of my homemade pepperoni here, which will give you a link in the details below to that recipe. So I'm just gonna start with that layer. Put a decent amount. And the ingredients that are in these pepperoni actually help wick up moisture also. So it's gonna plump those up. All right, sprinkle on some olives. These are just some sliced Kalamata olives. I really like the punchiness of the flavor of olives. Then we're gonna put some spinach. This is about, I don't know, a good two or three cups of spinach. And you know how spinach is. It will just wilt down to almost nothing. But this is really a good green to get into your pizza. Making it really healthy and nutritious. Then we're gonna put some sliced mushrooms, or you could do, you know, bell peppers or banana peppers, something like that, some sliced onion, red onion, that would be delicious too, but this just is our favorite. All right. And I'm really trying to go for just like one layer of each of these things. So mushrooms don't overlap a whole lot. All right, just like that. Now I'm gonna gently, gently just press that down a little bit, just to kind of seal them all together. I'm gonna pour the rest of the cheese on. And that is just gonna ooze down in all the little cracks and crevices. And then to make it the true Chicago style pizza, the sauce is on the top which you never see, right? You think you would put the sauce somewhere in the middle too, but the sauce is going on the top. Trust me, you are going to love this. And this part, you don't have to use all of the sauce, but it's good to have a pretty decent amount. Because you don't want it to overflow over your edges, because then it'll just make it a big sloppy, soggy mess. All right. So there I'm left with just a little bit of sauce left. I'm gonna smooth it out just a little bit. And then our oven is still on 375. And we are gonna stick it in there for 55 minutes. And that's when you can check it. And the way you're gonna know it's done is you're gonna see that the, the edges of the crust are really nice and browned. All right, in the oven we go. Okay guys, it is out of the oven. So now all we have to do, I, I did let this sit here for a good 10 minutes or so. You don't wanna pop the spring form off right after it comes out of the oven because you risk the sides collapsing and it oozing all over. 
So let it sit for a few minutes. Now we get to pull the spring form off. All right, so far so good. Oh, look at that. All right, you got to come in for a closer look for this guy. All right, so I'm going to let this sit for just a few more minutes because it's scalding hot, and then I'll meet you at the table for a taste. All right, our favorite part. This, I already know that this is amazing because we have been taste testing for a while. And it is unbelievably delicious. Get out a nice slice here. Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. And look at that. Look at how it holds all together. That is just amazing. But what's even more amazing? The taste. That's a big bite. Oh. Mmm. 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 Mm. A cheese is so creamy. The crust, buttery and rich. Mmm. You are going to love it. Come on back next week for another great recipe.